been a day. It's my first day in the Redwoods. We got such a beautiful welcome. Um, at 1440, they had blankets and all my favorite food in the fridge and notes and cards. And they even printed out a picture of me and Sammy and put it in a frame by my bed. And today I worked with two amazing healers, Diana Chapman and Kate Hudson. Kate I worked with remotely. Diana uh, just lives a mile away and I've known her for probably 15 years. And um, I released a lot, a lot of grief and a lot, a lot of rage. And then I had some body work and then I went in there, which I don't know if you can see, but it's surrounded by the redwoods. And my soul sister, who probably doesn't want me to show you to her, has been holding space for me. Say hello, Tina. <laughs> She's been, like, literally holding me most of the time, or holding space for me, cooking for me, cuddling me. She cuddled me all night, so every time I woke up, she would say, you are loved, you're safe, which made a huge difference. So, I am being held... I'm going through the ringer and I'm going to keep going. Doing a little nature hiking after a day of release. Hi. So, just got out of the pool, among the redwoods. Oh, my glasses are fogging, but um, I'll take these off. So, I, what did I do today? I woke up with somatic experiencing with Kate Hudson. She took me deep into rage and sadness, and I yelled and growled and cried and she taught me a really good technique um, not to escape your feelings because it's really important that's why I'm here to really be with the feelings but after you've like done a big processing to get your vagus nerve back on track like because it really shocks your system and your tummy feels all twisted up you know your vagus nerve is kind of that emotional nerve that runs down your spine and around your pelvic floor or your pudendum so to speak Anyway, here's the sound you make, and it really works. You go, you breathe in, and then you go. Like a foghorn until you're out of breath, um, and then do it a few times. It really calms the system down, so that was an interesting little tidbit. Then we had some lunch. We sat in the, oh, we went on a walk through the redwoods, which was like forest bathing, and I trained to the mother tree, which is like my favorite thing to do. And then that felt really good and brought my system down. Then we had a little lunch. We sat outside in the sun. Then I did grief yoga. Um, and that was much more intense than I thought it would be. More grief, more rage, more release more stretching, more twisting, more vagus nerve rehabilitation. And then I rested. Then I met a woman who reads tarot and she made me a little Yoni sea glass sculpture I can show you later. But she also really just, I think, reminded me of, you know, what I'm always teaching you, right? That um, about quantum love, that it's, um, you know, it's important to feel these feelings and I'm going to and I will continue to, but it's also important to be in the surrender and in the flow of things and in the acceptance of things. And I'm not rushing to acceptance by any means, but I am really, I mean, it's only been two days and I can't even believe, I know there's, it feels like there's an endless pit in there to release, but um, I feel really good right now. I feel peaceful, I feel in my body, I feel surrendered, um, 
so that's good. And now I'm gonna go get some din din and probably go to sleep early and do it all again tomorrow. So here I am. Look, so pretty. The doggy's barking. But I'm on my third day. What happened today? Today I um today I had somatic experiencing. Um I screamed and raged and grieved into a pillow and on the floor and got a lot of shit out. Then I had some body work and she got really deep into my mastectomy side, which doesn't get any attention ever. Um, I mean, I certainly don't pay a lot of attention and I really just like released a lot of rage that I wasn't expecting, so that was interesting. Um, this booby actually moves now, which is kind of new. Um, and then I had breath work. Paul Dennison, who is partners with David Kessler, the grief expert, and he's the one that I do grief yoga with, Paul, but he also does breath work, and that was really deep, release more. Then I went for a hike through beautiful forest, I mean, just astoundingly gorgeous, uh, with Diana Chapman and my friend Tina, and just entrained to nature. Of course, there was a visit to the mother tree, as well today, every day includes that. And uh, my friend and coach and beautiful soul, Catherine Woodward Thomas is on her way here. So she's gonna stay with us for a couple of days and add to the equation. Um, so I'm about to eat a little bit and then go for another nighttime swim. Day three. Hi, so I'm sitting in the woods by this sculpture just randomly here in the forest called the Union of Opposites, which is a lot of how I'm feeling, but I'm doing one of my favorite things to do with nature. And that is, I've explained this to you before, but sipping up the energy and letting it intensify in your womb. So you, um, you sip, 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 and you imagine pulling, you open your yoni, and you imagine pulling the energy from the center of the earth, you know, your butt's right on the ground, and then you close and breathe out and let it intensify and then sip and breathe. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. You ready? You go. Squeeze and open like a straw. Squeeze and and it just kind of creates, it feels like an intense like an intensifying of this really warm, to me it's like red, warm energy. It smells so good here. And the cool thing about any forest, but something really special about this one, is that it's pure home frequency, unwavering, unchanging, firm, beautiful frequency. And so you just have no choice when you're in nature this deeply, but to entrain to it. You know, your system, because nature's not gonna entrain to you and you just naturally entrain to it. And it's one of the reasons I love it so much and find it so healing. Try it. Okay, so day four. Woke up this morning, did somatic experiencing again. Oh, what happened here? A lot of, we oh, hello. A lot of weeping, a lot of uh, just, it, it feels like labor, you know, just like literally I'm on all fours, moving energy and crying and weeping and moaning and feels at the time like it's never going to end and that it eventually runs its course. And 
my friend Tina and Catherine were here and they were just doing a beautiful job just holding space and then I laid back with my head on Tina's lap and she at the somatic uh, experiencing therapist Kate Hudson at her suggestion <laughs> very light um, she uh, Tina held my you know my the base of my head and then my kidneys and like was running energy to my kidneys and Catherine was running energy through my feet and it was just like zoo, zoo. and then at a certain point it felt like everything in my pelvis relaxed um, everything just relaxed in a way that I didn't know muscles were tight there it's just it went whoosh, which was really wild really powerful then we went to a walk to the mother tree. I'm just gonna do this. Then we went to a walk to the mother tree. <laughs> um, and that was beautiful. And we took these pictures and there were like an or there's like an orb of light around me, which is wild. Then we did grief yoga and there was a lot of rage. I mean, I beat I have never beaten something up that much and voicing and just so much energy released. Then later on this afternoon, I had a kind of Reiki energy healing session with a beautiful woman named Genevieve whose daughter died. And that's when she started um, channeling and connecting and getting into energy work. And that was really profound. And she gave me some messages from Sammy. She said that as soon as she's, you know, cause her guides come in and she, talks to spirits all the time she said as soon as she started Sammy came in and was like it's me it's me it's Sammy you know and then he was like showing her that he was using this and he was showing her that um, me and him and from the heart and one of the things that had come out of me because you just start voicing things you don't even know where they're coming from during uh, grief yoga was I don't know where this came from but it was just like I'm Sammy's voice and um, that was one of the things that came out of me and then during this Reiki session later, she was saying to me afterwards that he kept showing her this for him and then with the other hand for me. And he was saying that both of us are coming through my voice and that his voice is going to have its own impact and, um, and that my voice will as well related to him and that eventually I'll be speaking from the heart. He'll be speaking from the spirit side. Um, and he also said that he showed her this which in her experience always means you know that there's going to be a huge transformation she's like he was showing me he was saying my mother is going to have you know is going to show up in an entirely new way probably to herself as well as everyone else um uh, she saw all sorts of lives of mine. Um, she said that one in particular stepped forward from the 19th century who said that her ch she went through the same thing. Her child um, was poisoned, uh, but that she didn't fare as well as me because she didn't do what I'm doing now. And she died, um, but that it was really important what I'm doing with this grief work and that um, the most important thing that I need to do to survive this and thrive through this is just like focus on what would be most loving to myself and not worry about anyone else, including my family, and just continue, continue, continue to do that. And as I do that, that is taking care of everyone else. <clears throat> so that was a good reminder. Um, what else did she say? I think that was it. And now I'm going to go swim in the saltwater pool and float with Catherine and Tina, have a little dinner, and then go to sleep, and then do it all again tomorrow. Oh, the other thing the energy lady said, she's like, normally when I first start on someone, I have a lot of clearing to do first, you know, before I even start moving in there to work with the energy. And she's like, I don't know if it's because of what you did all day today or in general, but there was nothing to clear. <laughs> so that's a good sign. That means I was releasing, releasing a shit ton. And, uh, you know, I'm clear right now. You know, I won't be clear an hour from now or tomorrow necessarily, but I'm clear right now. So that's good. And I also had the download that I 
you know, it's not going to be for a while, but that I need to make what I'm doing available to women who can't pay for it. I mean, I'm being gifted all of this, but it's not like this is common and that people get gifted this and most people, you know, can't afford this. And it's so important. So, and there's so many mothers, just so many mothers. And it's the mothers that are going to save the world. And the mothers are grieving and they're losing their children, not just to drugs in all sorts of ways, but they're not, I'm hearing from so many mothers, seven years out of their child dying, three years out, and they're like, I still can't breathe. And I already can breathe. I mean, it's not like I'm all better, but this is so important. So I've been talking to all of these healers and they're all on board of creating something for women mothers who have lost their children to go through this process for a week and raise the money to pay for it so that they don't have to pay. That is one of the gifts that's going to come out of this too. I think that's it. Anyway. Okay, so day five, um, up early this morning at nine o'clock, I met with a psychic medium who is a really trusted friend and advisor of Catherine's, uh, met with her on Zoom. She had a lot, my dad had a lot to say, um, a lot of apologies, um, Sammy was... Um, really just wanting, you know, there was a lot of clear messages from her that mirrored through, you know, from him through her or whatever, that mirrored what the energy healer said, the Reiki woman said yesterday around, you know, that he's really intent upon me being in my power, me being happy. And like that woman who I guess was a past life of mine, you know, that I was telling you about from yesterday, who stepped forward and said the two things she didn't do that she wanted to make sure I did is what I'm doing now and why she didn't survive. What I'm doing now and also just really following what is loving to myself and making that a priority, which we all know I'm not that great at. So then this morning, the, sa- the different woman, the new woman, the psychic medium was saying, You know, the main thing he wants, he keeps saying is what is good for you, what is right for you is right for everyone. What is right for you is right for everyone. And all he wants you to do is be happy and take the burden off your shoulders and and, um, really focus that peace on the home. He kept saying he wants peace in the home and peace in the home is going to start with peace in me, which I thought was interesting and very true. Then I had somatic experiencing with Kate Hudson. And last night I really didn't sleep. I was really, uh, the night, I really was in a lot of trauma. I was flashing images of finding Sammy and his face. And um, I couldn't sleep and I was crawling out of my skin and I couldn't get the image out of my mind. And it was almost like after releasing so much sadness and grief and anger and rage and boy have I been releasing that shit this week it's like the trauma could finally come through and I was really in that um and then somatic experiencing I was really processing that and uh sounds came out of me that I didn't know I could make it was really intense really powerful and really deep but very very releasing so that was at 10 and then at then I had body work again with that same body worker who worked on my boob last time and said my uterus was frozen. And after all the rage release and all the trauma release and everything else, my uterus was really flexible. But boy, did she release some more scar tissue. And she just kept saying, you know, there was, she said it's like, there was, it was like styrofoam. There was so much scar tissue, not only around my breast, but underneath and like pulling up my abdomen and it killed. And she said, God, there's so much. It's like you put every piece of rage you didn't want to feel in these little pockets of scar tissue. And so 
she was just releasing that and that was insane. And then she did release some stuff in my stomach and my uterus was moving and mobile and there was a pulse there again. And she, then she worked all over me. That was really, and I felt horrible after she left. I was in so much pain. She was like, just take, oh, there was this one point where she was releasing something in my stomach and it felt like she was moving this huge bubble and she was just pushing, pushing, pushing. And I could feel this like giant thing moving across my stomach. And I was like, what is that? And she's like, that is lactic acid. A big bubble of lactic acid like came out from the scar tissue from my C-section there. <sighs> so I, you can imagine the pain I was in. I took a bunch of Motrin, um, chilled out for a while, then did breath work. <laughs> and then crying and moaning and releasing a ton of that. It's really interesting because it's very different. This grief breath work is different than other breath work I've done. So it's a lot of vocalizations and, you know, it's, it's really powerful and like a lot of releasing in a different way than what I'm used to, you know, beyond just the breath, but it's all with the breath. Then I rested for a little bit and then I went over to Diana Chapman's house and had a session with Matt. And Matt took me on a shamanic journey into a beautiful place of peace where I was like floating in this blackness. And then he had me do a body scan and I found, you know, I had this pain right in the center of my chest. And in the middle of this, of course, I'm forgetting about the breast and releasing all this scar tissue and whatever else and the anger, I, that wasn't even on my mind consciously. But as he takes me on this journey and he says, okay, what do you feel in your body? I said, I'm feeling like a pinch in my chest. He's, and he's like, he had me go in, you know, I forget what he said, but it was like, the magic school bus, make myself really small and go in there. And all of a sudden I was in this cavernous cave with these stalagmites, the ones that, I don't know if they're stellas, they're different words, but the ones that hang from the cave, from the roof of the cave. And so it was like, I was in this huge cavern where there was light coming in and the top part was red, but in the shadows in the caverns inside, there was like this blackness. And he's like, go see what's in the blackness. So I go there and there are like these faces <laughs> pushing through the walls, like these shapes. And I was really kind of freaked out, but they didn't seem super on, ominous. And he said, and he's coaching, he's walking me through and he's like, find a way, you know, can you let them out or what do they want? And I said, they want to get out. And he said, can you let them out? And I was like, I don't know, not without cutting myself. Like, how am I going to let them out? And then I figured out I could kind of pull apart the folds in the cavern walls, which were me inside my body, right? I pull them apart and this like gremlin comes out. And I talk to the gremlin and whatever, and he's not, he's angry, but he doesn't need any kind of completion. It's really, really old anger. And I ask him to show me, and he shows me the beach of this house we rented in Michigan when the kids were really small. And he's doing, he's pointing to his throat and he's mad. And I asked him what he wants and he just let me know, like, I just want to be seen and heard. You know, I don't need any completion or anything to be different. It's in the past, but I was the one time, one time that your voice, you didn't really push your voice through and made yourself heard and, you know, stood for yourself. And then all of a sudden I could see just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these beings being like, yeah, me too, me too. So he had me kind of do this thing where I could just let them all out at once. I didn't have to go. And then... What did they want to do next? They wanted to transmute to this like green sparkling fluid light. And it became like a lake in this cave of this sparkling green light. Then he had me swim in it and let it permeate inside me. So I wasn't just on the outside of my body, my little magic school bus body, but it was like inside too. And I became it. And then I just kept getting the word clarity and truth, clarity and truth. And that's what the green stuff was. And it was beautiful. And I was like resting in that, like I had been resting in the blackness. It was so peaceful and so clear and so strong. And then it wanted to just kind of flow from this side of my body right into my heart center, deep, 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 like a falling waterfall. And it was wanted to stay there. 
as like my point of clarity and truth. So that was pretty cool. We did that, then we had Indian food. We hung out for a little bit. <sighs> and it was a very intense day, but I did huge work today. I mean, oh my God. Physically, I released a ton. Emotionally, I released a ton. Um, I really started to do some really deep PTSD work around finding Sammy. Um, I got a lot more messages from him today when I was doing breath work. Um, oh my God, this was so sweet. When I was doing breath work, I saw him at one point and he was all in white and he was wearing this long sleeve white shirt that he always loved to wear. And he was just kind of smiling at me and just looking at me so sweetly and serenely and just like sending me light. And I think I must have mentally or thought like I want a hug. And I had all these blankets on top of me while I was doing breath work and all, and he, and, and he just like climbed, he was a full, you know, his full 16 year old self, but his weight was like a five year old, you know? And he just got on top of me and his head was here and I was just holding him and I had this pile of blankets on me. So it really felt like I was holding him. And I feel like on a certain metaphysical level, I really was. And we were just, I was just holding him and I could really connect to him. And I've been really connecting to him and getting, you know, what I keep getting is that if he had lived, which I knew, I mean, I've said this before, but I got it on a new level. If he had lived, he would have been such a bad addict after the fentanyl, you know, two times a heroin addict, right? And heroin addicts are impossible almost to treat and to recover, much less multiply that by two at least, you know? And so, and I've heard so many nightmare stories since then about people who live through this and their lives are destroyed and he would have taken us all down and he really wouldn't have lived his life purpose or really made a difference in the world, which is what he really wanted to do. And that was really powerful when I found his bar mitzvah speech this week, which talked about the mark that he really wanted to leave in the world. And it's like he left rather than stay and do that because if he had stayed he would have been a horrific addict and taken us all down with him. And I think I'm finally starting, and I can't even believe I'm saying this, but I think I'm finally starting to realize that I would rather him fulfill whatever purpose he's gonna fulfill through me and on his own from the other side than not fulfill it and live a pained life and take us all down with him, which definitely would have happened. So that's bringing a very bittersweet peace, I guess, that I'm still wrapping my head around. Oh, there's so much other stuff that's been coming through, but I'm really feeling him, and, but in a really beautiful way, not in a painful way. And I did a lot of work with the trauma, so hopefully tonight I'll sleep well. I'm gonna go out and visit the mother tree just because I haven't seen her today. And then I'm gonna try to go night night and do it all again tomorrow. Okay, we're going into the glaring forest. Let's see. Rebellion, the glitter realm, reflecting elements hanging with pure mirrors, making people and society seem feel seem to feel so disempowered and downtrodden. This is for those who feel broken or disempowered. But there's one truth that we can hold on to. No matter how powerless or broken we feel, we can still choose to reflect light and kindness off of each other.
And then there's, is this where the little houses are? How do you get in? Through here? Look. Wow. Wow. Okay, I gotta turn this off and explore. Wow. I love this so much. Look. Hello. So today, somatic experiencing, um, then I met with a really amazing psychic medium who is helping me clear some energy that needs to be cleared. Um, and then I went on a really long hike with Tina and Diana Chapman and she took us out into the glittering forest and it was so cool. Um, it was all, I mean, just all these mirrors and lights and art and little fairy houses and, you know, fairies are very important to me. I have a good relationship with them, although, you know, we haven't really been in contact since I was a little girl. So I'm really excited to um, reinvigorate that relationship and the little the little area like there was a they call it a cathedral it's like a perfect circle of redwood trees that this guy has like 25 acres and he's made this into a thing that if you know about it you can go and see it and he had um, kind of without any nails or anything wedged these long pieces of wood around to make it like an enclosure and then inside I was just, you know, there were all these little fairy things and fairy houses and I was thinking, I was just lying there looking up and the energy was so amazing. Then we came back, uh, had a little launch. Then I did body work. She said my body is like a hundred times better in terms of what it's released and how cooperative it was and how relaxed it was and how healthy it felt muscularly and skeletally. Uh, than when I first got here, so, and I feel that way too. And then we did breath work and he said the same thing that I'm like, you know, just watching me during the breath work, the amount of fidgeting and peace versus peace um, was pretty significant. And the other thing that was kind of interesting is that all the people that I've been working with, I wouldn't say Diana Chapman, but like with the somatic experiencing person, breath work, um, and yoga, grief yoga, which was really powerful, not something I'd ever done before, but it's like expression of feelings through movement and sound. It's like really intense, but all of that, none of them had ever done something like this, working with someone every single day in the way we have. And it was really, you know, exciting to them because they'd never done this before but also it was really validating for me because you know all of them said what I was feeling because you know I don't always trust myself and I'm very quick to think I'm in denial or something but I feel like I have shedded like an entire layer of not even skin like something thicker than skin and I have released so freaking much and I went hard and deep like you know I was not fucking around <laughs> and you know you're gonna take me in there I'm gonna go all the way in and I didn't put up any resistance and I just did it and it was a lot but 
I feel really strong. I feel really in my body. I feel really clear. I feel um, centered. I feel like I can move forward and be happy and live like I'm dying, which is what I know Sammy would want. And I'm, of course, I'm going to still have moments where I'm deep in grief and, you know, it's not a linear process and I'm still going to be sad, but I cannot, I mean, I cannot even describe the change in seven days without any distractions, without any substances or alcohol or anything else. You know, we have just been completely present with it for a week. Um, so it feels really good. And now we are going to go um, swim for a little bit, get nice and hot because the water is like, it's this beautiful saltwater pool that's like 100 degrees. So we're going to get super hot because it's probably like 60 degrees outside. And then we're going to go visit the mother tree and dance naked under the full moon to kind of close out the week and let the phoenix rise. You know what I'm saying? So that's it. Thank you for being interested in my process and I love you. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to read this to Sammy under my beautiful mother tree who stands for just constant unwavering strength and truth and love and clarity. All right, let's see if I can do this. Sammy, my beloved boy, I love you more than I could ever write in words. And I know you know that where you are. And I know that you feel that where you are more completely than I could express or you could feel within your or our beautiful body suits. All I can say for now is thank you. <sighs> thank you for giving me 16 years to love you in person and watch you grow. Thank you for teaching me about the capacity of my heart to love. Thank you for waking me up, shaking me up, and breaking me up because now I'm shattered open and I finally understand and here are my promises to you. I promise I will stand in my truth and clarity with power and conviction. I will be constant in connection with that knowing just like the mother tree. I will remain connected to and guided by you and listen, feel, and be with that guidance. I will stand for myself and Jackson and my truth, even in the face of any kind of anger or fear or doubt. I will be your voice wherever and however you want me to speak. I will open to more love, love more and live more, living and loving like I'm dying. I will speak your name, celebrate your life, and allow all of this awareness of you to permeate my existence. I love you oodles and oodles and noodles, my wonderful, beautiful boy. And your loss will not be in vain for me, for dad, for Jax, or Ethan, nor for the world. I feel you. I know you. I see you. I love you to eternity and beyond. Okay, now I'm going to just tear this up into really small biodegradable pieces and I'm going to put it and plant it under the tree where it can become part of the forest floor. And every time I need a reminder, I'll think of this place and hopefully come back soon. Now, 
The question is, where to bury it? I think this is probably, yeah, this is a good place right here. Proclamation. I'm going to my other pocket. I have some crystals. <laughs> 